All right, good morning. Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to Masterclass Friday here at Adobe Live. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Photography Evangelist here at Adobe. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you guys live once again. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at something that I haven't done since the beginning of the Masterclasses, and we're going to start off with a 2022 Lightroom Crash Course. So it's going to likely be at least two parts. So that's why I call this one part one and next week is part two. And uh, we'll see if we can finish it in two parts, but um, it may go to three. I think we can get it done in two, though. Uh, so with that said, what is the Masterclass Friday? For those of you who are new, if this is your first time watching Adobe Live, great. Glad you're here. If you're watching on another channel, perhaps you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, wherever you happen to be, that's awesome. So I see Jesse over there on, on YouTube and I see Kevin on Facebook and I see some other folks coming in. So great. I see a whole bunch of people on Adobe Live. So Robert and Sean and Craig and Doris and Frank and Jan are here and that's awesome. But uh, if you are watching somewhere else and you do want to participate in the chat, I'll try to watch both windows, but uh, chances are I'm going to really pay attention to this one at Adobe Live. So if you haven't uh, looked, gone over to Adobe Live to ask your questions or say something, then um, you can, of course, sit where you are and watch all you want. But if you want to participate in the chat and you want to definitely make sure you're seen, head over to b.net slash Adobe Live, log in with your Adobe ID, which if you don't have one, is free to create on the spot. And that way, at least I'll be able to see your question for sure. Um, but again, I'm gonna try and monitor. Uh, I've got it down to two windows now. I'm gonna try and keep an eye on both of them. All right, so what's this class for? This class today is for um, Lightroom Classic. So there are two versions of Lightroom, Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. This one's a Lightroom Classic one. I'd done a light, how to get started in Lightroom a few months back. So that one's pr pretty fresh. If you need to go watch that one, you can. But the one I had done on Lightroom Classic is at least now a couple years old. So we're going to start from scratch. We're going to pretend you don't know anything about Lightroom Classic. And what I really want to hope to accomplish today, especially, is making sure you're on the right foundation to use Lightroom Classic because that's where most people run into problems either early on or later on because they didn't understand or they didn't set up a good foundation so that they can be successful from that point on. I've been using Lightroom, Lightroom Classic since day one, 14, 15 years ago, 15 years ago now. And um, I completely understand how the structure works. So I never run into a lot of the problems people run into with missing images or they can't find this or they can't find that or um, you know, images are all over the place kind of thing. So once you understand that foundation, life will be a lot easier going forward. You can manage tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of images in a catalog and uh, life will be good. All right. So with that, without further ado, since I got less than an hour now, let's go ahead and dive right in. So I'll switch over to my desktop. I've got Lightroom Classic running right now with my catalog we're only going to just look at this for a few seconds because we're going to create a brand new catalog from scratch so that you will see how the process works from scratch now in my catalog i've got a little bit over a quarter million photos i've got 261,717 photos in my catalog and um that's just i manage that many photos in one catalog of lightroom with no problem no hesitation whatsoever all right so let's hide Lightroom Classic for a minute and let's hide everything else and let's go to the operating system because this is where life begins. <laughs> this is where the foundation gets set and if you don't do this part correctly, it just makes Lightroom Classic that much harder to deal with going forward because you're not set up for success. What I mean by this is whatever your operating system is, Mac or Windows, whatever your hard drive structure is, how many internal, external, whatever you have, before you even attempt to get started with Lightroom Classic, do yourself a favor. So hang on, Mustafa is asking, one, asking a question. Do you keep them all in one catalog? Absolutely. I've been a one catalog guy for at least a decade uh, with no problem, no hesitation, all in one catalog. All right. So um, back to what I was saying. So 
the first thing you need to decide is where your photos will live. Because when people just open up Lightroom and start importing photos, they don't really understand that it's importing them in place in most cases. It's importing them wherever they are. So if they're not in a good place to begin with, and then later you say, oh, I didn't want that folder on my desktop, and then you go to your desktop and move it or back it up or throw it away or whatever, then that's when you're causing problems for Lightroom. So I don't want to import these photos from my desktop. I want these photos to be in a folder where they will live going forward on whatever drive they're going to be on going forward. So before you import anything, whether it's on your hard drive or whether it's on a memory card, decide where that location is going to be. It could be an internal drive, it could be an external drive, it can even be a NAS for your photos, not the catalog, but for the photos. All right, so I've decided for this, this lesson that I'm going to use the pictures folder that the operating system created. So there's a pictures folder on your hard drive. Um, on this Mac and Windows, you both have, you both operating systems give you the same kind of folder. And in that pictures folder, I'm going to create a new folder. Let's create a new folder and I'm going to call it my photos and videos. In other words, this is where all my photos and videos are going to live. Now, this could be an external drive. It does not have to be the internal. I want to make that perfectly clear. If you don't have enough room on your internal drive for all your photos, by all means, put them on an external. But wherever you put them, make sure that that drive is going to get backed up. So if I do put them on an external, then I need to make sure that when that external, when I'm done using Lightroom, I always back up that drive at least once a day. Okay, so now that's an empty folder. There's nothing in it. Now I'm going to decide in that empty folder, whether I've got the images for it or not, what my structure is going to be. Meaning, as a photographer, what do I like to shoot? And I've already, just so I'm not going through this process taking time to do it, I've already done it. <laughs> Let me just open up the, the test folder here and let's just go ahead and drag my structure in. All right. Um, yep. Go ahead and move them. All right. So cool. And let's view this by a list so we can see it better. And there we go. So I do client work. That's work that I you know, do for other people, whether I'm paid for it or not, but client work. I take family photos, my family, pictures, family reunions, gatherings, so forth and so on. I have friends, a couple. So I take sometimes pictures of friends. I shoot landscapes. I mainly shoot portraits and travel. And I shoot sometimes for things I'm doing at work like Adobe. So figure out what those folders are going to be for you. If you do street photography, maybe yours is street photography, travel, and something else. If you do architecture, maybe yours is going to be architectural. If you just photograph sports, maybe yours is going to be sports. And in the sports folder, you're going to have football, baseball, soccer, so forth and so on. Whatever it's going to be, whatever your structure is going to be, make it in that folder, even if those folders are empty right now. Now, my folders are not empty. My folders actually contain things. So in my client work, I've got two folders, one called Instacart, one called um, Isabel LeMay. I've got a family one. I've got uh, a friend's one with just random pictures. I've got some landscapes. I've got some portraits. I've got some travel and I've got some work. So I've got all of these things already have folders in them with pictures. So I've got this, this other folder of a shoot that I'm going to add to it later just to show you how that works. But for right now, this is my structure and I've gone ahead and start putting things in. Can you show how to back up folders? Drag them to another drive is the simplest way. Plug in an external drive, drag and drop, now they're backed up. But it's probably better for consistency if you use a backup program. So on the Mac, you've got Time Machine. On Windows, I'm sure there's several utilities as well. But the, the how to back up is literally drag and drop to another place. Now, another way to back up is to use a backup service. I use a, a company called Backblaze. And Backblaze continuously backs up my hard drive to the cloud. So just you pay for unlimited storage, whatever it is, seven bucks a month for your, you know, for, per computer. And no matter how much data you have, it's unlimited, backs it all up to the cloud. So that way, Worst case scenario, this entire house goes under somehow. 
I can buy a new house, buy new computers, and then go to Backblaze and pull it all back down. So whatever your backup method is, just make sure your photos are always in three places. Two of those can be local. A third one should be off-site. Even if you're taking a drive to a neighbor's house or a, or a relative or a safe deposit box, whatever your method is, your photos should be in three places. Okay, next up. Uh, can you add folders to it later on? Example, you want to add a folder to a client? Well, absolutely, because you know it's not. this is not a one-time thing. Maybe you also decide you have a new category later on. All I'm saying is start your structure first. You will always be able to change it. You'll always be able to add to it. You'll always be able to change your mind. Maybe you decide to not do portraits anymore. And now you're doing um, uh, clown photography, <laughs> whatever it is. And you, you put a clown photography folder in there instead. So yes, this structure is not permanent. This is just to get you started. Okay, so and you're gonna see why that's important in just a minute. So now we're gonna go back to Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna start where you would start. I'm gonna say, give me a new catalog. Don't use this catalog you've been using for 15 years. Give me a brand new one. And then the, the, whatever I call it, so I'm gonna call this one uh, Lightroom Crash, Lightroom Classic Crash, Crash Course, All right, uh, Crash Course, there we go. And then you're gonna decide where you're gonna put the catalog. So the catalog and the photos don't have to live in the same place. Photos, however, can reside on external drives and NAS systems network drives. Catalogs cannot. Catalogs need to be on a local drive. It could be internal or external, but it needs to be local, not a network drive. So that's the only distinction. Photos can live anywhere, wherever you have the space for them, Catalogs have to be on a drive connected to your computer. So can I put it in the same pictures folder? Sure, that's where I'm gonna put it. It doesn't have to be in the my photos and videos folder, but it's gonna reside in the pictures folder. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and create it right here in the pictures folder. And um, oh, it's asking me to back up this, this catalog I'm switching out of. I'm gonna skip it this time. All right. Um, now, Lightroom sometimes does not relaunch like it's supposed to, so let me relaunch it. Because you can only have one catalog open at a time, it closed my other catalog, quit Lightroom, and it was supposed to relaunch it with a new one, but I helped it along, I relaunched it myself. Okay, next thing. So now, here it is, empty catalog, nothing in it. No photos whatsoever, I'm starting from scratch. No folders, no collections, no nothing. Not a single photo in here. It even says click to import to begin. Okay, remember you said you create, or remember we created that structure? Uh, here's a question. Hi, Terry, but can it be on? Let's just say. Okay, so uh, Eric's asking an important question about, um, I assume about the catalog. Can the catalog be like on OneDrive, Dropbox, Creative Cloud folder, whatever? Yes, technically it can. I've done it in Dropbox for years and years and years without a single problem. The only caveat to that is if you're going to put it on a syncing system like OneDrive, Dropbox, whatever, that if you're going to go open it on a different computer, you got to make sure it syncs. So where people get caught up is getting impatient. So they put it in here and they forget to quit out of it. Then they go to the other computer and try and open it. And then now you're opening an older copy. You... Quit out of it, but you didn't let it finish syncing. So you go to the other computer, you're opening up an older copy. You quit out of it, you let it finish syncing, but you go to the other, other computer before it finishes syncing up to the other computer and you open it. So as long as you're disciplined about letting it sync to that location that you're putting it in before you go do something else, you'll be fine. Where people get in trouble is they forget that it has to sync first and then they go open it somewhere else. Now you're in this limbo of opening up an older version and the newer version yeah so i only recommend that you put it in a, in a place like onedrive dropbox whatever if you're disciplined enough to manage the syncing okay next up um we created that structure let's go back to it there's the structure um right here the my photos let's go back out of it one the my photos and video remember that's the folder we created with all that structure in it Guess what I have to do now? That's all I have to do now, now that I've done this, is all I do is drag that on top of Lightroom Classic. 
And Lightroom Classic says, do you want me to import all of that stuff? And I just simply say, yes. I'm gonna skip that part for now. And here it all comes. And the best part is, when it all comes in, look right here in the folders, over here on the left-hand side, it comes in with that beautiful structure you created. So you have your My Photos and Videos folder at the top. You have the client work, the family, the friends, the landscapes, portraits, travel. And if I go to landscapes, guess what? It's all the three different places that I had in there. You get your organization magically in Lightroom, just like you had in the operating system. And now, once you do that import, and it's all here, you don't ever have to manage it in the operating system ever again. Because you're gonna do all the management here. You decide to add a new folder, you're gonna do it here. You decide to change the name of a folder, you're gonna do it here. You decide to remove a folder, you're gonna do it here. You decide to change where the images are, you're gonna do it all here. So you set that structure up once in the operating system, once. And then once you bring it into Lightroom, whenever you decide that you're ready to import that structure in, you do all the management of it from here on out in Lightroom Classic. You no longer touch the operating system. I can't be clearer about that because where people get in trouble, let me go demonstrate getting in trouble. They go into that folder, they go mucking around in that folder. I used a nice word. I said mucking around. And then they decide to say, oh, you know what? This shouldn't be client work anymore. It should be client work for me. And they change something. Now, when you go back to Lightroom, you get this. You get this question mark because it doesn't know what that is. It doesn't know where client work is anymore because you went behind Lightroom's back and you made a change. If you wanted to change client work for me, you could have changed it here and everything would have been great. There was no reason to go to the operating system and do it. So once it comes into Lightroom Classic, leave it alone in the operating system. Stop messing with it. If you want to mess with it, that's fine, but mess with it here. So let's go fix the problem. So, oops, I changed the name. I'm going to change the name back temporarily. That goes for changing the name, moving it, moving stuff around, stop doing all that in the operating system. Now we come back and guess what? Now it's fixed. There's no more question mark because it sees it again. It says, oh, I know where it is now. I see it. So when you look at these folders in the folders area of Lightroom Classic, they're just a link to where the originals are. These folders don't exist in Lightroom. They exist on the hard drive. Any changes you make on the hard drive break that link to Lightroom Classic. But if you make the changes in Lightroom Classic, you're making the changes everywhere. So for example, if I go to that client work folder and I right click on it and I say rename and I say client work for me, I get what I wanted. I get to change the name of the folder and guess what? If I go to the operating system now, it's changed. So if I do it in Lightroom Classic, everybody's happy. Lightroom's happy, it's not missing anything anymore. The operating system's happy because you really changed the name of the folder because that's what you wanted to do, but you did it in a place that won't get lost in the shuffle. You won't lose the connection. Now, I don't want to change the name of that, <laughs> so I'm going to rename it one more time. Uh, take off the for me and put it back to the way it was. And now it's back to the way it was in the operating system too. So this is the key to the whole thing. Once it's in Lightroom Classic, you manage it in Lightroom Classic. You don't manage it anymore in the operating system. You can manage it all day long in the operating system until you bring it in. Once you bring it in, stop looking at the operating system. Okay. All right, next up. So that folder that I've got out there that let's go out of this folder. And let's go to the desktop because I still got I think I still got one on the desktop here. Uh, let me do it the other way. Hang on. Let me go back and show it to you visually. Hide others. I've still got one 
on the desktop, I think. There it is, called Rapid Box Shoot. Now, again, I don't want Rapid Box Shoot. And by the way, we can get rid of this folder because we, we put it where it's supposed to be. Okay, I don't want Rapid Box Shoot on the desktop. It was there temporarily. I brought it in from a memory card. I, I, you know, copied it over, but that's not where it should live. Where should it live? It should live in here and it should live in client work. But I, I just told you don't mess with things in the operating system, right? Right, you're like you're getting a little worried now. Wait, you're you're going to the operating system again. You just told us not to do that. I told you not to do that for things you already brought in. You can add things and then bring them in again, bring them in because they're never they were never there in the first place. So I can move this into client work. Yep, move it. And Lightroom's still happy because Lightroom doesn't know I did that. I didn't affect anything that was already in Lightroom. I moved a folder that didn't exist yet. And Lightroom's still happy. It doesn't, doesn't if, I go to, if I go to client work, it doesn't know it's there. Because it's not constantly looking to see what's changed or what's been added. It's only looking to see what's been changed that it already knew about. Does that make sense? So now if I go into client work, and I drag Rapidbox into Lightroom Classic to import those photos. Hang on, I held down too long on the drag there. There we go. It'll say, oh, you wanna bring in all these photos from the Rapidbox shoot and you wanna put them in Lightroom Classic in, and in place, you just wanna add them because they're already living where they're supposed to live? No problem, I'll let you add those. And we're also gonna build smart previews this time. All right, so import. And here comes the new folder called Rapid Box Shoot and Lightroom's added to them already and it's already building the smart previews. Life is good. I can continue adding things to the folder that never existed, but if I wanna make any changes to what already exists, I do it in Lightroom Classic. Hopefully that's clear. Now, one more. What if I've never put them on the hard drive? What if they're still on the memory card? What if they're on this thing? All right, they're on a memory card. Now what? Could I have dragged and dropped the client work in, um, could I have dragged and dropped them to client work in Lightroom? No, because that would cause an import dialog box to come up and it's not gonna move them unless you tell it to move. You could tell it to move it in the import dialog box, but it's not gonna do it automatically. So yeah, you could do it that way, but yeah, you can do it that way. But as long as you make sure you know what you're doing, make sure you're saying not add, because add's gonna add them to the desktop. Move is where you want it to do. You want it to move them from the desktop to um, the client work folder. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the memory card in. All right, memory card's in. And Lightroom Classic usually detects a memory card up front. And now, I've got these photos from Iceland and they're on the memory card. So up here in the upper left-hand corner is where they currently exist. They're on a memory card called Untitled. Now I want to copy them from the memory card and I'm actually gonna take it a step further. I'm gonna copy them as DNG, which we'll, we can talk about that a little bit later, to the hard drive, to the pictures folder, and I'm gonna put them in a new folder, into a subfolder. Actually, no, I'm take that back. We're gonna put them in. First of all, we're gonna to go to My Photos and Videos. And we're gonna put them in Landscapes. Or I guess this would be, actually, no, this would be uh, Travel. Let's go back up one. This would be Travel, not Landscapes. And good, I don't have an Iceland folder yet. So I'm gonna put them in a new subfolder called Iceland. And see, I manage, <laughs> be helpful if I spell that correctly. Iceland, there we go. Uh, I'm managing this entire process right here. So make a new subfolder called Iceland, put that subfolder in the travel folder in my photos and videos. That's where I want these to end up. 
So copy them from the memory card, put them in the right place, make a new folder, or if I already had an Iceland folder, I could put them in the Iceland folder. I could put them in Iceland, make a new folder called Iceland 2016. Whatever you wanted to do, you can do all of that right here. All right, so now that that's gonna happen, just looking to make sure, and yep, it's all gonna happen now. I'm gonna go ahead and say import. Oh, I don't want them all, just for the sake of time. Let's uncheck them all, and let's just bring in a few. And I'm only bringing in a few, just again, for the sake of time. All right, so let's import. And it's copying off that memory card to the new folder that it just created. And that new folder, when it's done, should show up as Iceland. Yep, cool. At least it should have. Oh no, where did these go? They did not show up as Iceland. Hang on. Let's go see where they went. So I want to say, show me. Wait, did I put them in landscapes? Oh, they ended up going in landscapes. Okay, so um, let me make sure. No, they did not. Hang on. Hold on, guys. I want to see where these ended up. Show folder or something I did wrong. Go to folder in library. They're in travel. Ah, they did not get put into the, to the new folder is what the problem is. So let's go ahead and let's fix it. We can. Don't go to the operating system. We can all fix it all right here. So go to the previous import. Those are the 15 photos that came in. And what happened is they did, uh, they, the subfolder didn't get created. So they just threw them loosely in the travel folder. But I also realized I have an Iceland folder too. <laughs> so let's, um, let's keep, the, keep the theme going that I was doing. Let's do travel. And while we're here, we're gonna click on travel. We're gonna create a new folder, add folder, and we're gonna call this new folder, um, my photos and videos, travel, um, choose it. Wait, hang on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm adding the folder, I'm not creating a new one, hold on. One more time, new folder, add subfolder to travel. There we go, that's what I wanted. Not new folder, add subfolder. And this one's gonna be called Iceland, let's call it something different like Iceland trip. All right, so, um, and we won't include any selected photos, we're just gonna create it. So that created the empty folder, Iceland trip, and then we're gonna go back to the previous import where I imported those 15 photos by mistake to the wrong place, which is good, we get to fix our mistake. Then we just simply drag them to that folder. So those 15 images did get it, did get copied off the memory card. They got, because of my mistake, thrown loosely in the travel folder. I didn't want them loosely in the travel folder. I wanted them in the Iceland trip folder. So I created the Iceland trip folder, doing this all in Lightroom, took the 15 photos, drug them in there, and now if I go to the operating system and look, I, in travel, have an Iceland trip folder with 15 photos in it. So uh, I'm just reiterating, I don't do any of that management after the, after the fact in the operating system. If I need to manage, if I need to move, if I need to rename, if I need to change my mind, I do it all in here. Now let's say I change my mind and say, hey, these are really landscapes, they belong in the landscapes area. Then I would take that Iceland trip folder and drag it into landscapes. And now as Iceland, Iceland trip, um, and I can even drag it into the Iceland folder so that there's Iceland 2016, Iceland 2017, and Iceland trip. Uh, any management that I wanna do, I'm doing it all right here. So now if I go back to the operating system, they're no longer in travel, they're in landscapes, they're in Iceland, and there it is, Iceland trip. So I never have to touch the operating system once the stuff's in Lightroom Classic. Anything I wanna do can all be done here. Okay, now that I've done that, second biggest part of the lesson today is knowing the difference between folders and collections. Folders, we just proved it so many times, is where the physical photos are on your hard drive. You don't mess with them on the hard drive anymore. 
Any changes you want to do, I can't reiterate this enough. You do it in Lightroom Classic. Done. However, that's not how you organize in Lightroom. That's how you organize on the hard drive. But once you're in Lightroom, you want to be able to organize not limited to a folder. Does that make sense? For example, I've got three Iceland folders here from three different trips to Iceland, theoretically. And they should stay in their respective folders because that's where that's the time they were taken, the year they were taken, the trip they were on, so forth and so on. But now let's say I want a best of. I want my favorite Iceland photos in one spot. Well, I don't want to move them in their folders because they're in their folders where they belong. That's where collections come in. So now let's go in to the next section down, which is called collection. So I'm going to close up client work. I'm going to close up travel. And we're just going to deal with uh, Iceland for now. But we're going to go down to the next section, which is collections. Collections is where the magic happens. This is where you get to have fun. Folders are true to where the photos are. That's where they live. Shouldn't be really messing with them anymore once they're in because you, you brought them in. If you want to play, you play in collections. You want to see, hey, I want to see my favorite Icelands and my favorite uh, waterfalls all in one place, no matter where they were taken. I do that in a collection. I don't move images around once they're where they're supposed to be. So let's go create a collection. Create a collection. Let me zoom out so you can see it. Create a collection. And let's call it Iceland Favorites. And I'm not going to include anything right now. And create. So that created this empty collection called Iceland Favorites. So now I can go in and I can say, I love this waterfall. I'm in the folder right now. I'm in the Iceland trip folder. But I'm going to take that waterfall that I love. It's one of my favorites and drag it into that collection. It didn't move it. It didn't change where it is on the hard drive. It didn't do anything to the actual photo on the hard drive. It just references it in this collection. So now if I go back to Iceland 2016, ooh, I got some beautiful favorites here. I like that one, I like that one, I like that one. Like these are my favorites and this one of the Northern Lights. I'm gonna drag all of those into my favorites. And then let's go to 2017. Oh my God, I got some favorites here too. I got this mountain range that I took. Um, I got this one. I love this overhead video uh, of the uh, trees there. I love this overhead drone shot. Actually, I love this one more. Let's drag those into the favorites. So now I've got 11 favorites from three different folders that didn't impact the folders one bit. Oh, wait, this is my absolute favorite. It should be first. I can drag them around in the order I want them in, the order I want to present them in, the order I want to print them in, the order I want to put them in a book in, the order I want to put them in a slideshow in. That's what I get to do when, it, when I'm in a collection and it's not touching the photos in the folders. It's not screwing with the images in the folders. It's not changing any of the images in the folders. It's only affecting my organization in a collection. Oh, I want to end with the Northern Lights. Let's put that one at the end. Oh man, let's put all the water shots together. Cool. Let's take the mountain range and put that up here. And let's put this water shot over here as well. Let's put all the water shots together. That's what you get to do in a collection. And maybe you want to just create another folder called, or I'm sorry, another collection called Travel Favorites. So now I'm going to go ahead and create another collection here. Create a collection. This time I'm going to say include the photos I selected because these are already favorites. Let's make this one travel favorites. So now I'm just making, this one has the same 11 photos so far as the other one, but now this could be anywhere. It doesn't have to be Iceland. Let's go back to travel. Let's go to Bahamas Cruise. And let's say I really like this lighthouse. Let's drag that into travel favorites. Let's go to New York. Oh man, I really like the Statue of Liberty photo I took. Let's put that in travel favorites. Um, I like this, uh, This um, I think this is in uh, Manhattan Skyline. Let's drag, <laughs> I was getting ready to say that was in Tokyo, but it's not. 
All right, uh, let's do the Paris. Oh man, I really like this picture of the Louvre. Let's put that in travel favorites. And so now I got 15 travel favorites that are from all over the world that did not touch a single folder. So that's what collections are for. Can the same photo be in multiple collections? Sure. These, these Iceland photos are in the Iceland favorites, but they're also in the travel favorites. You can't do that with folders because folders are the physical images. You don't want to be duplicating all that crap on your hard drive. You, you don't want 15 copies of the same photo on your hard drive, but you can have 15 references of it in collections. Make sense? So collections, if we were to use a, a music analogy, you have all your favorite I albums from Stevie Wonder. And then you make a playlist of your favorite songs by Stevie Wonder in the order you want them in. Doesn't change the albums. You're not taking a song from one album and putting it on another album. You're putting them in a playlist in the order you want to listen to them in. Collections are those playlists for your photos. All right. Um, now, now that we've understood... A, don't mess around in the operating system anymore. B, we know where folders are. That we don't mess with them pretty much. Once they're done, they're done. They're in there. Um, and collections are where we get to have fun, where we get to organize, where we get to do everything. However, let me, let me make a quick reminder. If I go to this, this shot and I go in this overhead shot of this sunken ship, by the way, and I go in my develop module, and I take out um, all of the saturation to make it black and white. That is a non-destructive adjustment I made in Lightroom. Technically, it does not touch anything on the hard drive. But if I now go to my Iceland favorites, because I'm in my travel favorites, is it changed? Yes, because it's the same photo. If I go to the folder, oh my God, let's go back to the folder where that exists. I don't remember which folder it is in. Let's go back, let's ask, ask which folder it's in. Go to the folder. It's in the 2017. Yes, it's black and white here too, even in the folder. Because any changes you make to the photo get made to the photo in Lightroom. Not in the operating system, but in Lightroom. So all of your edits remain in the catalog. And if you make an edit, it makes it across the board no matter where the photo lives. It makes it in a folder, which we don't really mess with, but it also makes it in every collection that that photo is in. So you only have to edit the photo once. You don't have to edit it every, like if it's in 10 collections, you don't have to edit it 10 times. Now, there is another caveat. Let's, um, let's undo that. Let's go back to develop. Let's put the saturation back to where it was. So now it's undone everywhere. I don't have to worry about that. Um, if you, let me ask the answer to Thomas's question. If you shoot both raw and JPEG, would you make a separate collection for each? JPEGs for emails, eh, you can. I don't shoot raw plus JPEG, so I don't really have a lot of workflows for that. But your, your logic is fine. There's no reason you couldn't make separate collections for them. Um, but you gotta keep in mind that Lightroom is a processing application as well. So I don't shoot raw plus JPEG because if I want to email all these out, I can just go to file and choose email photo and it will email them out and make JPEGs on the fly. Why do I need to shoot twice? Why do I need to take up twice, almost, not, not almost, but duplicate files? So if I want to create JPEGs to email, to share, to put on Instagram, let Lightroom do that. I only shoot one file, shoot raw. Anything I need from that raw file, Lightroom can make for me. So just a thought process. Ask yourself, do you really need to shoot raw plus JPEG? And you may. You may have a great answer for that. Okay. Anyway, um, where was I going? Okay. So now let's say that I want to have a black and white and a color version of that overhead shot. Let's actually pick a different one. Let's say I want a color version and a black and white of this, this um, beautiful sunset. So what I could do is I could say, make a black and white, but then it's black and white everywhere. But Lightroom Classic has a beautiful thing called, um, 
<laughs> virtual copies. I almost forgot the name. Uh, virtual copies. So if I go into photo and create a virtual copy, now that's a virtual copy that does not exist in the folder. It only exists in Lightroom. So I didn't duplicate the file. It's a copy that Lightroom uses. It doesn't take up any extra space, but it can be edited separately. So I can say, um, just give me a black and white of that. And now I have the color and the black and white. I can move the black and white, by the way, and the black and white won't be in the other collection because I created that virtual copy in one collection. So maybe in this collection, I want the black and white version. And in this collection, I want the color version. It's the same photo, but one's a virtual copy. And you can always tell the virtual copy because it has the little dog-eared corner. That's how you know it's a virtual copy. And then I have the original, which is here. So, so many powerful possibilities you have with working with collections. Um, all right. For me, collections are about organizing subjects so it does not matter what file type. Absolutely, because I have a video in here as well. This is an actual video um, of um, my drone flying over these trees and you can see the trees kind of moving and now the drones kind of going up to give you that slow pan. So it doesn't matter what file type it is. The collections are about organizing. All right, um, now there's this big gaping elephant in the room here, smart collections. What's that about? Smart collections let you create a collection that automatically updates based on criteria. So for example, you notice some of these are already rated five stars. Some of these have a green label. Uh, let me see if I can go through any more differences here. Um, you know, four stars, five stars, one star labels. Uh, some don't have labels. Some were shot in raw. Some were shot with different cameras. Some were shot with a drone. So all of these have different aspects to them. But if you wanted to create a best of everything, like your best of photos, maybe those are all your five stars. Because if you rated it five stars, you probably think pretty highly of it. So let's say, for example, I create a new kind of collection. I create a smart collection. And I create a smart collection that says, it's called best of. And best of is simply going to be one thing. You can have multiple criteria. I could say, Five stars, shot with a Nikon uh, D850 um, on a Tuesday, <laughs> yeah, whatever, uh, within a certain year. I want my best of, of 2016. So I could do multiple criteria uh, for whatever it is I want, but I'm just going to do a simple one is greater than or equal to five stars. So that's just going to basically create a collection of all my five star photos in this entire uh, catalog. And there they are. So these are all my five-star photos that are in this, this particular catalog. So if I say, hey, this black and white's not really a five-star anymore because I made, um, I don't like the black and white as much as the color, so I'll make it a four-star. As soon as I hit the number four, boom, it disappears. Because it disappeared out of this smart collection. It's still wherever it, in the folder it was in. It's still wherever it, or in the collections because it was a virtual copy. Still exists everywhere else. It's just no longer a five star, so it no longer meets the criteria. So if I then go decide, let's go pick a different photo. Let's go to Iceland Favorites again. And let's say that this, um, this waterfall should be a five star. So I go ahead and hit five. It automatically adds that to my best of because it now meets the criteria. So smart collections constantly update based on whatever the criteria was that was set up. You can have as many regular collections and as many smart collections as you want. It's limitless. So whatever ways you wanna organize, I wanna see my best of 2016. So I've had some 2016 photos in here, let's see. Uh, so let's go create another smart collection. Best of 2016. All right, so five stars or greater, but I got to add another rule. And the capture date, uh, let's go to date. The capture date was between, is in the range of 
2016, uh, January 1, 2, 2016, <laughs> 2016, 1231. Thirty, thirty-one. All right, so now I'm telling it. All the criteria must be met. It must be a five-star, and it must be in this date range. It must have been captured in that date range. Create. That's it. Those are my favorite. So it doesn't matter if I go make other photos five stars or whatever. If it wasn't captured in the year of 2016, it won't meet the criteria. So it does not matter. So anyway, that's how that works. And you, so now I have two smart collections. I have my best of everything. That's all five stars, 24 photos. My best of 2016, that's just my 2016 photos. In my regular everyday catalog, I have collect, smart collections by years that are edits. I don't want to just see every photo I shot that year. I want to see every photo that I've done an edit on. And what I mean by edit, I mean a retouch. So it's uh, if I did a retouch, that means it went over to Photoshop and came back as a PSD or a TIFF. So show me every photo that was taken within this year that's in the file format of a PSD or the file format of a TIFF. And it brings them in. And that way I get to progressively see all the shots that were good enough to edit each year. All right, uh, if I add a picture to a folder, on the hard drive, will it automatically update in Lightroom? Good question. Let's go test that theory. So let's say you go do the thing I told you not to do. I told you not to do that, right? So, oh, there you go. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to hide others. Okay, let me go find a photo. Here's a photo. All right, here's a photo just randomly sitting on my hard drive. And I'm going to uh, add it to the, um, Family Reunion 2010 folder. So let's go to that folder in Lightroom Classic to see what it is. So Family Family Reunion 2010, there it is. It's got six shots in it, right? And I'm now gonna go to the operating system. Hang on, let's hide Lightroom again. And I'm gonna drag this photo in to the 2010 Family Reunion. Yes, move it. Okay, so now image 20, or 2009 JPEG is in there. Did Lightroom change? Not at all. Because I told you Lightroom's not monitoring changes in the operating system because it has not, doesn't have to. It's only monitoring what you do once you bring them in. So if you want that photo added, you need to import it into Lightroom. Now, I will give you a trick. This is not a, cra this is like not a simple crash course tip, but because you asked that question, there is a way to do it without having to do a whole import. You can right click on it, like you knew you went and added a folder after the fact, or image after the fact to that folder. It's already in Lightroom. There is a, there is a trick to this. You can right click on that folder and you can tell it to synchronize the folder. That's, a, that's an old, old school Jedi trick. That if you say synchronize the folder, it says, oh, I see one thing that isn't in here. And you can even show the import dialog box if you want, so you can see what it is that you're about to bring in. Oh, there's the one photo you're about to bring in. Do you want to bring it in? Yep. And you bring it in and it's in that folder, so now in the 2010 folder, it's there. But it still did an import to do it. You just did it by right-clicking and doing synchronize. That's it. So now it's in there and now it's where it's supposed to be and so forth and so on. But just putting stuff in the folder behind Lightroom's back does nothing. If you change what's in the folder behind Lightroom's back, it's, it screws up Lightroom. But adding new things, it will not know that you added it unless you tell it. All right. Um, and now I can mark that a five star. And guess what? If I mark that a five star, it's going to be in my best of. Because that's a smart collection that always updates. All right. Jedi tricks. Yep. We will be doing more of those. So. We got like five minutes left. So let's cover a way, a, a, a collection tip that helps you add things to a collection faster. 
So let's say that I want to create a, um, a new collection, create a collection. And let's say that I want to create that new collection. I'm going to call it, um, favorite places. All right. Favorite places. Now there's an option to do it right here on the spot, but I'm going to pretend you didn't see that. There is a set as target collection, but let's pretend you didn't notice that. And let's go ahead and hit create. Now that created the empty collection and I could go to my uh, travel and I could go to, um, let's go back to Paris and let's say that I want this uh, Eiffel Tower shot and I could drag it in. But that gets old because see, I'm even having a, once you get a bunch of collections, you'll even have a problem trying to see where, where it is you're trying to drag it because you're constantly looking through the list alphabetically. So while you can drag and drop into collections all day long, that's not the fastest way. The fastest way is saying, hey, I'm gonna be putting a bunch of images from all over the place in this collection, and I don't wanna to have to sit there dragging them every single time. So what you can do is you can mark that collection, which I could have done it with the checkbox when I created it, but let's say I'm doing it after the fact. I can create, I can set this as a target collection. When you set it as a target collection, what you're telling Lightroom, and you can only have one target collection at a time. So if something else was a target collection, it's not the target collection anymore, this one is, because only one can be the target collection at a time. So now that I've got the target collection, I can go to New York, for example, and I can grab that Statue of Liberty image and I can just hit the letter B as in Bravo on my keyboard. I don't know why it's B, it is. And that automatically adds any images you select to the target collection. So there it is, it's there. So I can now quickly go in and say, I want that one, I want that one, and I want that one. Hit the letter B, boom, they're in there. I can go to landscapes. I can say, oh man, this was, this was Page, Arizona. These are great places, I love going here. I can grab that one, that one, that one, and that one, hit the letter B, boom, they're in there. I don't have to do that whole, select them, drag them, remember where I'm trying to drag them. It's just faster hitting the letter B, for <laughs> bag it for boss, boss photo. Yeah, those are great. So just hitting the letter B, once it's a target collection, we'll put them in that target collection quickly, fast, as many photos as you select, no matter where they are, they end up in the target collection. And so now my favorite places has all those photos in it because I just made that the target collection. Now let's say I make Iceland favorites, the new target collection. So best place or favorite places is no longer the target collection and Iceland favorites is. You can always tell which one is the favorite collection because of the plus sign. Only one will have the plus sign at a time. Now, it did not change favorite places. It left those images in there. But now, if I hit the letter B, they will go into Iceland favorites instead. So if I go, none of those are really Iceland photos, but let's say this one was, I hit the letter B, that one goes in Iceland favorites. And I can hit the letter B again and say, oh, that's not really Iceland, let's take it out. It just removes it, that's it. Okay. Now, where that came from, I'll give you one bit of trick, one more bit of trivia. You have this collection at the very top called Quick Collection. And at first, back when Quick Collection was really was first created, it was the target collection. You didn't have a choice. Like there was no other target collection. And what this collection was designated for isn't and that's why it was always the target. I want to quickly get some images together to export. I want to quickly get some images together to send to a client. I want to quickly put some images together for a slideshow. I want to quickly put some images together for um, a contest I'm entering. I, they're, they're not permanent. I don't need those images in a collection permanently because this is a one-time thing. That's what the quick collection was for. So if you have not changed your, your um, target collection ever, it's probably still the quick collection. Uh, and that's, it's just that temporary, not really your collection that you made. It's just for the purposes I meant. Things that are, you want to do temporarily. So if I make that the target collection, which it default to, defaults to the first time you ever use Lightroom, and I hit the letter B, it puts it in a quick collection because I don't care about this collection going forward. This is just like a temporary place. I'm putting a bunch of photos that I want to use for some purpose whatever that is, I wanna print them out.
And then once I print them out, I don't care if they're in a the quick collection anymore. So it's not a permanent collection. It's a quick collection. All right. That is our time for part one. Hopefully you got something out of this and hopefully this was the deep dive on Lightroom Classic that you always needed but never got <laughs> and that hopefully now for those of you who are new, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this in the future, you have the foundation to be successful in Lightroom Classic and always know where your photos are and always have organization and always be able to find stuff because Finding stuff with your folder names is the first part. If it's in Iceland, I know it's in the Iceland folder. Duh, I don't have to look anywhere else and know where those images are on the hard drive because I put them there first before I brought them in. All right, that's my time. Cheers, everyone. Stay tuned for the Daily Creative Challenge. Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll catch you next week for part two.